Hello everyone and welcome to another Facebook Live or YouTube Live actually. My name is Sarah Simon. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator coming to you from Appleton, Wisconsin where the Packers finally won. So life is good in Wisconsin. Hello Sandy and Becky and oh yeah I'm on the big screen today. Holy cow. Um, and Nancy and Denise and Amanda Karen, Linda, Dee, and Julie, thank you all for joining me. I'm sorry I'm a couple minutes late. For some reason, all of my stuff that I had saved was all gone. So I had to quickly look up my host code. I had to quickly uh, get the link from YouTube and put it into my ManyCam. I don't know why every once in a while it does that. And today just happened to be one of those days. But I'm not stressing over it anymore because it's happened so many times. So... Um, today, um, last week it seemed like there were quite a few people that were interested in some ideas for gift um, card holders for the holidays coming up. And so I have a fun fold that was new to me. Hello, Sarah. Um, I'm glad that you joined me. I was so happy to meet you last week, Sarah. Um, I have some a new idea. It was new to me anyway for a way to gift a gift card. And I received it in a swap. And so I ended up redesigning two different cards um, or two different designs with it. And I'm going to have it as a creative challenge because if you remember next weekend, I'm actually going to be in Minneapolis for my nephew's wedding. I'm leaving actually on Thursday afternoon. Um, thanks, Sandy. Yeah, I'm glad I could fit you in too because I love meeting up with you guys. So I'm going to be in Minneapolis next weekend. And so because of that, I am not going to be going live. So I thought I would give you this challenge as something that you could work on. Um, I think I'm going to try to record a video with um, showing you some samples of some of the new online exclusives that are starting. I have one today. Um, I have a one that I can show you that my friend Kathy made that she, um, all of the people that were at our event last Saturday had a chance to make. And then um, I just thought there's some more that are coming out as well that we weren't able as demonstrators to get earlier. And so I thought it might be fun to kind of show you some of those next week. So it won't be a live video. It'll be recorded, but I'll upload it so that it goes at 830 on Saturday. But you will have all of this week next weekend and all of the following week to make one of these gift card holders for a chance to win prizes from me. And I haven't really thought it through, but I don't think I've given away a bundle in a while. Hmm. I think maybe this one will be a bundle because it's a little bit of a difficult card. Not difficult, um, but it has quite a few layers in it. And you do have to kind of follow. It took me a while to figure out how to make it because I just have the card and I have to try to kind of take it apart and try to measure it as best I can. And so I was able to figure it out. So hello, Betty. How about if we give away some prizes? You know what? I didn't bring my Happy Mail in here. I have some Happy Mail sitting in the other room. Uh, I'll maybe get that at the end. Um, and I'll get up and I'll run and get that because I know where it is. I'm pretty sure I didn't move it um, from when I had my cards uh, this weekend because I had a card buffet on Friday and Saturday. So we had, last week we made this ornament gift box. And it had the little tree on the back. And it had the box on the inside that you could stuff with like paper money <laughs> um, or you could roll up a check. Um, you could put some uh, chocolates in there if you wanted to. And so I have that and we had a matching card that we made that was uh, looks kind of like a gatefold, but it, it matched the ornament. So you could give the card and the little ornament as a gift and have a, like a gift set. And so receiving these for commenting last week, so anytime you place a comment here, or if you are not in YouTube um, and can't comment there, you can always do it on my Facebook page and I do look that up as well. Receiving that, and I see her on here today, is Sandy, I don't know how to pronounce it, Sandy, I think it's done. Z-D-U-N, um, you will be receiving these. And I do have your address. And so I will be able to get those in the mail to you. And then 
for sharing. So anytime you share, whether it be to a Facebook page, you share to in a private message or anything like that, please mark that you shared. You can sh put mark that here in YouTube. You can mark it on Facebook. Doesn't matter to me. Um, I put all of your names into a drawing for prizes as well. And receiving a spool of this, it's Calypso Coral braided linen trim. And then I'm also sending, because I have more of these made, I'm also sending you one of these gift boxes as well is Sarah Mitchell. And Sarah, I do not have your address. You're a first time winner. So congratulations, Sarah. So if you could just um, send me a private message, either in YouTube or my email is createwithsarahllc at gmail.com. And I, give me your address and I will get these off in the mail to you. And then for placing an order. So anytime you place an order in the week, I also, and if you use, if it's under $150, if you use this host code, um, I also enter you into drawings. If it's over $150, don't use the host code, you'll still go in the drawing, but you will get benefits yourself. And I always, um, Z done. Okay, good, thank you. Um, you always um, still get put into the drawing if it's over $150 as well, but I want you to get those benefits and not me. So receiving, this is a pack, of, I think there are 20 in here. Yes, there's 20 cards and envelopes. They kind of go with that very cute. And then these are the very cute memories and more card pack. So these have different greetings on them that you can use on these cards. Or if you're a scrapbooker, you could use them for scrapbooking. And then also receiving one of these with it as well, because I did have a bunch of those made, is... Kaven Upren. So, Kay, I will get this out in the mail. I might just actually drop it by your house because these things to try to mail them so that they don't get crushed. I have I figured out how I'm going to do it, but I'm thinking with this other stuff, I'll probably just swing it by your house. It might just be easier. So, thank you all for supporting me. Thank you for all of you who have said that you've shared and you've given me a thumbs up on YouTube. I don't know how all those algorithms work, but they somehow help support me. I don't know how it works, but I appreciate all of that. And I know that I've picked up other customers because of you sharing and because of your comments and stuff. So I think that's enough with business stuff. I'm going to put some of this up here so I don't crush these ornaments as I bring other stuff in. And I think we're going to get to work. So I think we're going to do the sneak peek first. So let me go ahead and We'll transfer here. I'm going to turn my overhead light off because that helps as well with my shadows. So I think that's better for the shadows. Doesn't look like I'm very, there we go. I think I'm a little bit straighter now. Sometimes my head hits my camera overhead and when that happens, I bump it. So that is what's happening sometimes. Okay, sneak peek. Stampin' Up! is releasing some new online exclusives. And from what I could tell, it looks like they will be available to customers beginning at midnight tomorrow night. So based technically Tuesday um, is when you can start ordering these. So there's the Garden Meadow. And there is, there's a little um, gate here, a wheelbarrow with flowers. There's a thinking of you, which I love thinking of you. A happy birthday Every day is a fresh start. I loved that. Can't imagine having a better friend. I love these little rain boots. Of course, there are dyes. And there's also like this little, it's kind of like a little trellis or entryway. I kind of picture it. There's a cemetery that I used to live by. And they had kind of like this stone wall. And then on top of it, it kind of reminded me, they had like stones built so that there was this little archway looking through into the cemetery. That's what that kind of reminds me of. There's like little grass and meadow things here. So really cool um, stamp set and dies. And then the paper. Oh my gosh, this is some of that paper, kind of like that autumn one that was really, really popular. Who knows how long this is going to stay in stock before they're going to say that it's on back order. Um, I have some of the same ones that are left because last week I did... Um, everybody was able to make two cards. I'm actually going to be making one of those today. Um, but 
they were able to make two cards at that event that I was at. So this is the one side. Um, and so I did use up a lot of the paper with that. And then the back side, whoops, I have some of my white things here, are more, look at that wood grain. Um, there's just some more neutral things that you can mix with. These are a little bit busier again. Um, this looks like the sky that was in there. So you could stamp some other things on there or use it in combination with um, the front side. So really cool paper that's going to be available. Oh, I don't think I grabbed. I didn't. There are little, um, and I'll show you on, let's see. I can show you on this one. There are some little... Uh, kind of like our butterfly, those brass butterflies that we have. They have some little birds, and there's also some dragonflies. Whoops. So um, those already are on back order, and they're not due in until around the 27th of November, so right after Thanksgiving week. And so you won't be able to place those right away, um, but they will be coming back in. They're, it's not that they're out. So you can tell they're going to be popular if demonstrators have uh, purchased a lot of them already that they're on back order before they even come out that's usually a signature or a sign that it's going to be pretty popular all right so I'm gonna let you vote today this is the DSP that I decided to use isn't that pretty and some of the colors in there so if you look at the back of the paper it tells you which colors are in your um, designer paper so I pulled out as possibilities for this one, crushed curry, there's balmy blue, there's fresh freesia, there's a little bit in here of the orchid oasis. So I'm going to let you vote and we're going to take the most popular one and I'm going to go over the dimensions of what we're taking and we will actually cut our paper and then I'll look to see. So this is the paper we're using. I want you to vote if you want the fresh freesia, the balmy blue, the crushed curry, or the orchid oasis as our card base, because it could be any one of them and it will look beautiful, but I'll let you have a vote. All right, so our card base is going to be seven and a half by five and a half, and I scored it at four and a quarter. So I'm trying to show you a way that you can use this paper and kind of let the paper do all of the work. You also are going to have an inside piece or a neutral piece. I chose basic white. You could also do um, very vanilla for this paper if you wanted to as well. And this is five and a quarter by four. Our DSP is six by six. We're actually gonna trim this. I forgot to grab my trimmer. All right, so here is our trimmer. And what we're gonna do is we want the height to be five and a quarter. So you can decide if you want to cut off some of the sky or if you wanna cut off some of the flowers. I like to keep the sky and cut off some of these flowers. Each paper was just a little bit different. So at five and a quarter, I'm just going to cut off that three quarters of an inch. Now you could use this for the inside of a car somewhere if you wanted to. And then to try to get the most of this, I'm going to cut this first one at three inches. So I'm basically just cutting that in half, whoops, in half. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one of those in half again. So that would be at one and a half. And you can use either of these two pieces in your card and the other piece will be something that's extra. Okay, so we've got two pieces or we actually cut three pieces and we kind of look at it to see which one looks the best on our card so what do i mean by looks the best okay blue blue balmy blue blue balmy blue okay there wasn't a vote for anything but balmy blue so we're gonna go with balmy blue <laughs> all right so here is our card base and i'm gonna take this off so this is a super super easy layout that you can use with this card. I'll show you a couple of other cards that I made as well. So this is just going to get layered right on the front. That balmy blue does look very nice, ladies. Good choice. And then we have to decide if we want 
So this would be the one that comes next. Do we want that? So that would look like that. Or do we like, and I think I know what my answer is going to be on this one. Do we like that? And I kind of like this one because it kind of looks like there's more coming out, like the edge of it looks better, I think, than having this partial tree kind of hanging out. I like that we've got the partial tree, but the rest of it is going to the left. Okay, so that's the one that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this strip. So this blue could be used for something. That could be used for a side card. This could be used for the inside. That could be used for the inside. So I never throw these away. I keep all of these scraps because I'm probably going to use them somewhere else. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, and I didn't check my glue to make sure it doesn't have any little glue boogers in it. Oh no, look at that, it's flowing nice. I made this last week. This was one of the cards, like I said, at the event that we had for demonstrators at the high school that I, um, is one of the schools that I teach at. Um, we, I ended up having this as one of their make and takes. Okay, and then this is just going to go on this side. This is a quick, really quick and easy layout. You could make a whole bunch of these and make them kind of as a gift set and choose some different um, greetings on them. And you could, I'm gonna show you one other fold that you could use with this as well um, and make it something that you could easily give away. Good, everybody's loving the balmy blue. Thank you guys so much for answering and for your participation. So that's going to go right there. Okay, so super easy. All we need to do is throw a greeting on this. I can keep this blank on the inside so that they could add any sort of message that they wanted to. Um, since you chose balmy blue, I think I'm gonna choose, I think this Fresh Freesia would look nice with this Balmy Blue. And I'm gonna use one of the greetings from the stamp set. And I'm gonna use, um, every day is a fresh start. Just kinda could be used for any type of occasion, somebody going through a difficult time. Um, it could be used for just about anything. You could put thinking of you, on the inside if you wanted to. And to make this easy, I'm just going to take the one and three quarter inch punch and I'm just going to punch that out. Okay, that's going to be the greeting on my card. Now I wanted to add just a little bit of something to that. And so I'm gonna take some of our linen thread. Yeah, Linda, isn't that DSP? I just, I'm loving it too. I think it's going to be really popular, especially as people, I mean, I know we're still in winter and we're still in Christmas, but if you start thinking to some spring, <laughs> let's jump to spring before we've even had winter, right? After, I don't know how many of you are from Wisconsin who are watching, but um, Appleton had four inches of snow on Halloween. Um, so our kids were, I know that, like I have a friend that lives in Kakana and she said that the snow was all gone by the time the kids went trick-or-treating. I kid you not, I still had snow on Friday in my yard um, because the snow was not gone yet. We had much more in Appleton than they did even in Kakana. So, yes, I was thinking Fresh Freesia uh, for another color. Yep, yeah, that's Balmy Blue and Fresh Freesia look really nice together. You can kind of see it mixed in here, right, Kay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use a glue dot. And I'm gonna put the glue dot on my linen thread. And I'm just gonna set that down about right there. Okay, so my loops are nice and big so that I can stick my circle over the top of that. That's just gonna kinda go like that on some, uh, of course, some dimensionals. Just wanna get this laying flat here. 
just kind of in the middle here. There we go. I just want a little bit of that string hanging out on either end. And now I didn't grab, let me see if I can find them quickly. Here they are. I knew I would find them. Here are our little birds and our um, dragonflies. And I'm just gonna pull these out and I think I'm just gonna throw a little dragonfly on sort of the corner right there. Every day is a fresh start and super easy card just like that made. Um, doesn't have to be fancy. It is a little bit of a fun fold because it's not a normal card. The paper kind of looks like it's going on. Uh, let me show you some of the other colors and other patterns from the designer paper that I used. So here's a thinking of you one. And for this one, I used a different label because the thinking of you was just a little bit bigger. And I used again, the linen thread. There's our little dragonfly. Um, here's that same paper. I think that's the same paper. It is. Nope, it's a little different, I think. Nope, I think it's the same. I think I used the first strip instead of the second strip on this one. I used um, I used crushed curry on this one, and I used some green ink instead of the black ink, and I did it on white instead of bringing in a different color. Here's a little bit different fold. So for this one, I used my six inch piece of paper and I cut it into two inch strips. Okay, and I was able to put some of the birds on there and I used a different stamp set. I didn't use the ones that went with it. Um, here's yet another one on Fresh Freesia with some of those birds and another stamp set that has a vertical greeting. And here's another one that's like that. So again, five and a quarter and then two, two and two and just put them all together in the panels. And um, each of these is scored at, I believe it's two and an eighth and then four and a half. And then this one's not scored at all. So it's eight and, eight and a half by five and a half and then scored at two and an eighth four and a quarter, and then this is two and an eighth, as, or this is two inches as well. So pretty easy. So could you see like just taking these with different greetings, packaging them up and giving them as a really easy gift? Yeah, the vertical greetings are so cool, are they not? Because we don't have a lot of them. So it adds a little bit. So maybe take three of these, take three of these. You got a pack of six, throw some envelopes in it, wrap a ribbon around it, and give it to someone as a little gift. Um, super easy and fast to put all of these together. Looks like one of my birds moved here. I think that was right there. All right, so that is that. And then I did make a couple of other samples and I did get a swap card that I can share with you. So these were the samples that I made for our event last week too. So this is that kind of that gateway, um, archway type thing that I ended up putting the paper behind it. And then um, I wanted to make it kind of look like it was brick. So I ended up using a um, an embossing folder for that, for the exposed brick. And then it just says thinking of you on the inside. And then this one is a gate fold. So I just cut the two strips at two inches and then opened it up. This is, whoops, got disconnected. Sorry, give me a second here to get reconnected again. Not still not sure why this happened, so I apologize. I think we're back. All right. Okay, so this uses the hexagon, um, new hexagon punch with the greetings and then one of the stamps in the corner there. And this one I used a few more of the stamps along with the dies. I did some of the flowers. And again, this time instead of the brick, I ended up using the, um, uh, this is kind of the timber it's called embossing folder and put some of those in there. Here's another fun fold 
that opens up like this. So this uses one side of the paper and then this uses the other side of one of the papers. And this is the ribbon that comes with it. It's uh, very vanilla with some of the pecan pie little stitching in the center. So that was just kind of a fun card. And then this was a card that I got in a swap. I'll take it out of the plastic because I know it's hard to see. Um, this glimmer paper is also something that's going to be in the online exclusive. So there's a purple color and like a greenish blue color and I, I can't remember the other color, maybe a pink. I can't remember exactly which colors the glimmer paper is. But this uses this cut out that paper, the designer paper in that arch and then used it as a little fun fold to open that way. So just some different ideas of things that are coming up. Um, the other thing in the online exclusives is going to be this stamp set that is called Fluffiest Friends. Is that not the cutest? And if we look at the dies that go with that, I haven't put mine together yet and had a chance to use it. But again, there's like a little archway. There's a little beehive. Um, there's like little bees that you can stamp and these little flowers. There's grass that you can cut out. And last week, as one of the make and takes, Kathy Miller made this cute card with that little cat holding the flower pot. And look at the green grass along the bottom with the flowers. And then again, the flowers on the inside along with the little bees. So this is using some of that. Um, we're using some of this paper today in our card as well. Um, this is that Bright and Merry um, stamp set. That's the really bright colors in the um, holiday catalog. So I wanted to give you at least, since I'm not going to be on next weekend <laughs> live, um, I wanted to give you at least a little bit of a sneak peek of what is coming. Again, if you're a demonstrator, you've been able to order this for the last month. Um, but if you are not a demonstrator and this is something that you are interested in, it will go live at midnight on Monday night. So all day Tuesday, you would be able to start ordering any of this stuff. Plus, there's some other stuff that we were not able to order. We only just saw little pictures of a, on a flyer. Um, and so I don't even know what else is all going to be available, but there look like some pretty cool things. So you'll have to check that out on Tuesday. I know I am on Tuesday morning. That's the first thing I'm going to do. All right. So now for our creative challenge, I'm going to make two of these so that you can see it done twice. Um, and so you are getting three cards today, but two of them are the same. I also do have a PDF for this one. What's the name of the DSP? The name of the DSP is Meandering Meadows. I think that's what it is called. What did I do with the, here it is. Yes, Meandering Meadows is what it's called. And it has balmy blue, basic black, blackberry bush, or blueberry bushel, cherry cobbler, crushed curry, fresh fish. There's all kinds of colors that are in it. Um, and it's called Meandering Meadows. And it will be an online exclusive. So when you go to the Stampin' Up! store, um, you're going to look for um, online exclusives. And you will see this will, you'll see these there, but you won't be able to order them right now because they're out. Um, but it's saying that they should be back in stock again on around the week of the 27th, I think it was, of November. So um, they're not going to be out for too, too long. Um, okay, this is the card that I received in a card swap. Is that not the cutest? Santa was here. And when I opened it, I was like, wow, that's really different. I really like that layout. And then I took it out of the envelope, and there was a note that said that a gift card went right here. And I was like, it's a gift card holder. <laughs> All right, so it's very, very clever in how it opens up. And I used this one for one of my card buffet cards because I know that the ladies that I just had Christmas cards this last um, weekend and they love having some gift card um, holders as options. So I decided I never like to take, I want to give credit though to um, Sandy Carlson. I believe she's from Minnesota, is the person that designed this card that I got in a swap. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make something 
similar to this. So this is going to be my creative challenge. Um, I had never seen this fold before, so it took me a little bit to try to figure out how to do it. So I'm gonna make two cards with this. Um, I am opting, instead of using the um, stamp set that she did, I'm gonna be using the Sending Cheers. I'm gonna be using two different designer series paper. We're gonna do one with our little gingerbread man. That's gonna be the first one we do. And then we're gonna do one with some of the dies. I just love this little Santa hat um, for the dies, and so we're gonna do one that's a little Santa gift, um, and we're gonna do both of them using this fold. All right, so that's what I have in store for you. So let me get out the first card is going to be, I'll do the gingerbread man one first. And I don't have all the dimensions um, on here right now because I am going to um, attach a PDF so that you can actually print it and there's pictures and the dimensions are on there as well. So our card base for this one is going to be early espresso and this measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's the size of a normal card, um, but it's not folded. It's just going to be the base because the part that's folded is the front part, right? Um, she went three and three quarters by five for her designer paper. I decided to go four by five and a quarter, so mine goes out just a little bit further. Um, she used this fun, um, it's green and hot um, melon mambo, I think, or rich, um, not rich razzleberry, um, uh, berry burst, I don't know which color it is, but it's a pinkish color um, foil paper. I decided to use gold foil for mine. I liked how the foil looked on there. Um, and this um, foil, measures three by four and a quarter. So it's four and a quarter by three. And then I have another um, early espresso, and this one measures three, um, I'm sorry, four by two and three quarters. So it's just a quarter of an inch smaller than that gold. And then the white is just going to be a quarter of an inch smaller than that. So it's three and three quarters by two and a half, two and a half, sorry. Um, this one is going to be for the inside because if you notice when you open it up, this is a little bit shorter because of your gift card going in there. So this, I did mine three and three quarters. She did hers, I think three and a half um, by two inches. So mine just goes out a little bit further. I have a scrap for doing some of our stamping. And then this is our little mechanism that helps this move. And this measures six inches by two inches and I scored it at two and two and a half. This really wasn't too hard once you figured out how to do it. Oh, Amanda's using this stamp set right now as we watch. Well, I'm gonna give you an idea of what you can do with it, Amanda. All right, we're gonna do some stamping on a couple of these things. So we're gonna do some stamping on this and we're gonna do some stamping on a scrap and we're gonna do some stamping for our inside. This is going to be for my envelope, just to have that designer paper that matches it. We're just gonna put that on there at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna bring out for this card, we are going to need the, I've got all of this in one bucket, so here we go. This is my stack for that card. Um, and then I put all the stamps together in one. All right. We are going to use the pecan pie. Here's our little pecan pie. And I am going to stamp the gingerbread man on my scrap in the pecan pie. Now, I have a brand new stamp pad here, and that looks really, really dark. Honestly, when you have new ink like this, this will lighten up as it's sitting here. Um, once it dries, you'll start to see that it starts to get a little bit um, lighter in color. Then I'm going to take the early espresso, and with that, I'm going to give him a face. I'm going to bring him to life with a little face. Okay, so there he is. Isn't he cute? And now there is, if you want to... If you don't want to putz, if you don't want to have to, if you don't have a die cut machine, you could take the real red and there is 
a real red. There's the three hearts that you can color in. Um, and there is a die that matches that as well. We are also going to stamp, I'm gonna open up my real red. I'm gonna stamp some berries because I decided to use the die and cut out little hearts to put on there. And then I'm also going to use with some shaded spruce, just get a little color of green in there. I'm gonna use my holly leaves. Okay, so those are all the things. Hi, Kay. You won, Kay. I don't know, you're tuning in late, so you'll have to go back and look because you won. I think you won for placing an order for last week, so go back and check that out. All right, I'm going to set these all aside, and then, like I mentioned, we do have dies that will cut all of this out. So we have our little gingerbread man. See how lighter he is already? I don't know if you can notice that, but he's already a lot lighter than when I first stamped him. So that will cut him out. We have our little berries that will cut those out. We have our holly leaves right there. And I did have a scrap of red. Not sure where my scrap of red went, but we do have the three hearts should put that on some white here. Okay, we do have the three hearts that can fill in those three hearts. So you can either stamp it or you can cut them out. I chose to cut them out. So you will be seeing that in just a second. So through the magic of TV, I have the gingerbread man and I was afraid I was gonna lose those three hearts. So I went ahead and put them on him right away. And I think my little, oh no, here's my, Holly and my, come on, my berries. Here they are. All right, so that's all that I need for that had to be die cut. I'm going to put these dies back so that I don't lose them because there are some tiny ones in there. All right, I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to make more of these because I loved them. And so I'm going to actually set this aside and cut this out later. And then on my big one here, um, I'm going to use the Real Red ink. And I'm going to put it down a little bit because I'm going to put this holly sort of up here somewhere. So I'm going to put this Sending Cheer just down a little bit. I want to get it straight though. Okay, that looks good right there. And then on the inside, um, I'm going to use For You. I'm just gonna kind of put that in the middle. And then I thought, let's bring some of that holly on the inside as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and, here's my holly over here. Um, I think I'm actually going to do the berries first up in this corner and then I'm going to stamp the holly off of that. Okay, so that's going to be for the inside of our card. All right, everything that we need to have stamped is stamped. So I'm going to close up these ink pads because I'm notorious for dropping things in those ink pads. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go ahead and I don't want this little tab on here because I'm not using the gingerbread man as a little tag. So I'm just gonna use my snips and I'm just going to trim that off. It's nice to have in case you do wanna do it as a tag that you have this that you can put ribbon through and you can string the ribbon through. You could string a bunch of them on a little string. I just didn't need that for this one. So we're gonna set him aside. We're gonna set this aside for right now. Actually, let's, let me back on further review. Let's go ahead and let's build, um, let's build our little uh, gingerbread man, build the front of our card. So I'm gonna put him kind of on an angle like this rather than putting him straight on. 
I thought it just added a little something to have him kind of sideways <laughs> on here instead of straight on. It filled up a little bit more of the card and then his head wasn't over the top of the um, cardstock that I had. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him that way. And then I'm gonna put these up on some dimensionals as well. I think I'm gonna use some, sorry for my reach here. They're in my little holder that's back there. I'm going to put these on some dimensionals like so and then I'm going to put one little dimensional on one end whoops back side didn't come off for those of you that hurt I don't know how many are local but the volleyball team that I said I had to go do the scorebook for, they won the state championship. It's the second year in a row that they won. The girls are so nice. It's so hard to see the seniors leave because they've worked so hard for four years, but it was very, very exciting. So that was yesterday all afternoon. So there is going to be the front of my gift card holder. So now how do we put this whole thing together? It really is not too, too difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this designer paper. I'm going to attach that to the card base. And I don't, you could have used black too. I just kind of liked how the red and the um, early espresso look together. So I chose to use early espresso instead of black. And then we have to get our little mechanism working. So the first thing we have to do is we do need to put a cut. We need to put a slit in this. So I'm gonna bring in my little mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And we're going to use, I have it in my bucket here. It better be in my bucket, here it is. We're going to use this banner that is in the stylish shapes. And we have to cut this out of the middle of our um, foil sheet or whatever. It doesn't have to be foil. This could just be a regular piece of cardstock too. It doesn't have to be foil. I just like the look of the foil that she had in hers. So I kind of mimicked that a little bit. Need my cutting plates. <laughs> kind of set them off to the side, so I had to find them again. Oh, this one's a little bit flatter. So I'm gonna put my cardstock or my foil in here. I'm going to try to get this so that it's centered and it looks, that looks pretty centered. And then I'm gonna put my top piece over the top and then I'm going to run that through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now. If you had some sort of a punch that was like a long one, we used to have one that had like a slant on either side, you could get away with doing this with a punch. We just don't currently have a punch that's active and I usually sell my stuff that isn't active anymore. So that is going to be uh, what we need to help with our mechanism to make it work. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold in that six by two. It's folded at two inches and it's folded at two and a half. I'm gonna slip in to this opening that I just made, the bigger portion. So this bigger portion of that um, piece. And then I'm going to fold on the two and a half inch score line. I want that score line to sort of matched up so that it's about an eighth of an inch. So it would be where I would line this up. Okay, so it's about an eighth. I want it to be about an eighth of an inch. Leave that much of a border there is what I need for that. So that's where that's gonna be lined up. I find that with a lot of moving things like this, I like to use the tear and tape. You could use liquid glue. You would just have to make sure that you hold it long enough that for it to dry and stick, especially since this is going to be attached to the gold paper, 
this glimmer or this um, foil paper can be a little bit slippery if your liquid glue isn't completely dry. So you would just have to hold it a little bit longer um, to make sure that it dries. Okay, I'm gonna put one in between those two score lines is where that one goes. And then I'm gonna flip it over and at the very end of that short end, I'm going to, so this section is shorter than this one. The longer one is stuck underneath the foil sheet, the little section is the one that gets on the back, it gets the, the um, tear and tape. Again, you could put a strip of liquid glue there and it would work just the same. All right, so again, I'm sliding this under, I'm folding this, I want to fold it all the way down because I don't want this to stick until it's ready where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm looking for that to be about an eighth of an inch. I want it to be centered as best I can so that it looks like it's centered. And then I'm going to push this one down and let that glue stick. Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to line this up at the top so that it's that eighth of an inch. And give that a good press. Okay, so there is our, when we open this up, it flips like that. Pretty cool, right? This then cannot be glued down tight. This has to be put up on dimensionals so that the whole thing can operate. So I'm going to go ahead and put on dimensionals in each of the corners. And then just for good measure, I'm going to put some there and there. Just want to keep that mechanism working. Right. And then this should line up so it's right along the bottom of your edge of your card. So you don't want it to go beyond that, but if I match that up, it's about where the center is in my card. And now I can attach this to the front. Like that. And I can attach this to the inside. Hi, Mary. Like that. You're just gonna take, I just took a glue dot and put it on the back of my gift card. And that can set right there so that you have your glue, your um, gift card that's hidden right inside of there. Now I wanted to add just a little bit of something, you know, to dress it up just a little bit. And so we have this um, trim, this comes with a two pack, it's an online exclusive, and it's gold and silver it comes as. I'm going to use the gold, and it is one of those that are two-sided, so you kind of have to play around a little bit with the loops so that they both look the same. Um, so it does have, each side is just a little bit different. So I'm gonna tie this in a really tiny, just keep pulling it so it's kind of tiny. That looks about the same. Probably didn't need as much because I'm cutting a lot off here, but I thought it would look cute to put that as a little, kind of like a bow tie on our gingerbread man. So we're just gonna Set that right about there so he's got a little bow tie going on. And then these fun little dots, which these are coming back, I think, in stock either this week or the beginning of next week. Um, they do have some that are red that I thought would be fun just to kind of add around. Here's my take your pick tool. Um, just to add around 
the front of the card a little bit. So I'm just going to place a couple of these. And we'll go there. All right, so there's just a little bit of bling. Again, you just have to take a glue dot um, and put that in the center there. Put it right on that little mechanism and it'll close right inside of there for you to have a little gift card holder. Not too bad, right? Not as bad as it looked when you first saw it. So this is what the other one looks like from the inside. Okay, so you can see that little thing where the paper goes, this paper goes underneath there. It's a little bit deceiving when you look at it like, where does that go? Um, but if you slide the bigger part underneath in the opening and then glue that front part down is what you have to do. All right, let's go ahead and I had an envelope and I had some paper to, let's see, where did I put that? It was all in an envelope. Here we go. Here's our envelope and here's our paper, our DSP that matches. And we're just going to add a little bit of this. I never even put down a grid paper today. Completely forgot to put it down. Oh no. There we go. Take your pick tool. has a little bit of glue on it. I'll have to clean that off later. <laughs> All right. And then... This is my ribbon scissors, but I don't have another one sitting here right now. Those of you that come to my classes know I have a lot of dull scissors. So it's not that I don't have any dull ones, paper ones, but um, I just don't have any sitting by this desk right now. Okay, so there is our first gift card holder with the little gingerbread man. All right, let's do this again so that you can see the whole process again so that hopefully you can participate in the creative challenge that I have going for the next two weeks. Let's see, how much gluey is this? Not too bad. All right, we'll put the cover on, we'll set him over there. I'm gonna get rid of this ribbon. We're gonna pull out our next one. All right, so instead of Real Red, we're going with Poppy Parade on this one. So this is the paper that's going to be for our envelope cover. So this again is four and a quarter by five and a half. And again, I will have a PDF that will be a, that will be attached or a link for you to get to a PDF so that you can see all of these dimensions and see the pictures of the cards as well. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And again, this is Sandy Carlson from Minnesota. This is actually, this was her card and where I got this idea. All right, then I have, this time I'm going to put some, this is Poppy Parade. This is basic white and it's four by five and a quarter. And then I did the DSP just an eighth of an inch smaller. So this is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. That's really busy. It looks kind of, it does say fa la la. I don't know if you can read that from back there. It kind of just looks like red and white, maybe. I don't know. Um, but it does say fa la la. All right, this time I decided to use silver um, glimmer paper because like I said I or foil paper I really loved how she used the foil paper and I thought that that really added a lot so I did foil with all of mine um, again the foil paper layer um, on both of them is three by four and a quarter and then I have some poppy parade to go over the top and that's just a quarter of an inch smaller so it's going to be four by two and three quarters is going to be that and then my basic white layer in the front, which is just a quarter of an inch smaller than that. So it's um, two and a half by three and three quarters. That I ended up running through that embossing folder that we used a couple of weeks ago that had all of those fun Christmas sayings on them. So I got the part that had Santa, the Christmas, the gifts, all of that. I thought that that was kind of cute. So that's gonna go right there. Our little mechanism that makes this work is two inches by six inches scored at two and two and a half, right? So it's exactly the same size. It doesn't look like a square, but it is supposed to be two. <laughs> so hopefully I didn't uh, mess that up, but it's supposed to be two and two and a half. And then I have my inside piece, which is three and three quarters inches by two. And 
The rest is I've got um, a bunch of, whoops, <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that yet. That's going to be the magic of TV, um, but I'll just show you. One of the stamps is the word ho. <laughs> so I typed, I uh, stamped it three times in Versamark and I used some white embossing powder and heat set it so that I'm going to have a ho, ho, ho. It didn't sound good with just one ho. So I did three hoes for ho, ho, ho. Um, I also have some, this is some of our textured. I don't know if you can see that texture. There we go. It has like a corrugated look to it, but it also has a shimmer to it. It's called um, textured shimmer paper, and it comes in a pack. It has, it's 12 by 12, and it has like a blue, a green, and a white. It was in last year's spring catalog, and it was carried over into the annual catalog. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to um, cut out the... Um, little white parts of our Santa hat. So I've got the little fuzzy white thing for the base and I've got the little tassel of his hat that's going to be cut out with that. And again, through the magic of TV, I'm gonna have this all done. And then in one of the reds, oh, here's, see, here's my red scrap that I had for doing my three hearts. Um, on this, I'm going to get the Santa hat is going to go on here. Okay, so those are things that I die cut ahead of time for us. And I just have to go into, there's a white scrap there too, right here, because we're also going to do that holly. And since you saw me stamp the holly, I don't think I have to do that again. I just have to go to my envelope and show you that we have a Santa hat. We have the holly and berries, and we have the bottom part and we have the little ball at the top of our hat. Now this is meant to be so that you can use it as a tag so it does have this hole in it so that's why I cut the holly. I'm going to use the holly to kind of disguise that hole. Okay so I decided I wanted to disguise that hole a little bit so that's why I ended up cutting some holly, even though there's not anything else green on here. Just like in the last one, that holly, just that green just kind of pops on the page. Um, all right, let's see. Here's my envelope with that. And so we have a little bit of stamping to do. We've got our ho, 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 but then we have to stamp something for the inside. And I'm going to use Poppy Parade ink which we used real red last time so it's a little bit lighter and I'm going to use something from the um the stamp set that has the Santa was here I was thinking of doing that one I should have probably pulled that one out but I did holly jolly for the inside I'm gonna save a little bit of room so that I can write a little message underneath it and you could if you wanted to put some of the um, holly and the berries on the inside. I opted not to for this one, but you very well could have. All right, let's go ahead and build our front and then we'll bring our um, die cutting machine in here again to cut the inside part so that we can make this mechanism. So we're going to build this off of our white um, piece right here. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of liquid glue. I'm gonna attach that across the bottom and just put this okay, so that's just the that bottom part of the hat. And then I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue at the top and the little tassel. Can you see that it has like a, even some embossing on there? Um, that little tassel is going to go at the top. And I am going to put that on the front using some dimensionals. I have to keep track of that die that I need to use again. Because <laughs> something's going to happen. I'm going to be like, where's the die that I need? But I can see it right here. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and put our hat, again, kind of a little bit on an angle. 
And I'm going to take that ho, ho, ho. I'm just going to take my scissors. I'm going to cut a ho. And another ho. <laughs> And a third one. You could have like really done the Santa is here. I really liked how the embossing looked on here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, so those are going to go there. And again, I'm going to put those up on some dimensionals. So we'll go ahead and use our little mini dimensionals because they're tinier. So we've got one and two. Oh, it's getting darker. Oh, with this daylight savings being turned off. <laughs> It'll be nice in the morning, though. I hate waking up and having it so dark. Yes, Joan, I'm going to post directions. I will have a PDF that will be linked that you will be able to get all of the directions for this with all of the dimensions as well. All right, now I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put one of the mini dimensionals on the little tip. And I'm going to throw a little bit of liquid glue there. And I basically just want to make sure that I cover that little hole. All right? And then I'm going to pop this. I think I'm actually just going to throw a little bit of glue on here and attach it to... There we go. All right, so it just looks like that. And that's going to get layered onto that red. And I'm going to attach that holly jolly on the inside once I um, have this attached so I know exactly where it goes. All right, so that's going to be the outside. And we'll add a little bit of bling at the end. Um, I do need to bring in my um, stamp and cut and emboss machine again. We do have to cut this. I didn't cut these so you could see how easy it was. You don't really have to measure anything up. You just have to kind of guess where the center um, of your sheet is. Whoops, I just grabbed the ribbon. And so I'm going to set this down again. I'm going to roughly eyeball where the center of this is. No measuring needed. Doesn't hurt if it's just a little bit off. It's going to be fine. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm going to put my top over and run that through. For those of you that have the mini, I like to use the mini when I do my demonstrations if I can because it doesn't take up as much space on my desk for demonstrations. Some people complain that they can't get their mini to work. You do have to offset your plates a little bit like this when you run it through. Otherwise, if they're all lined up on top of each other, it doesn't catch. So if you just kind of um, stagger them a little bit, it works a little bit better. All right, so we have this done. So now it's time for us to, I didn't hit the middle exactly, but it'll still work. Um, we're going to go ahead and fold on our two score lines. Okay, and as a reminder, the longer end is going to go into the hole and to the back of our foil paper. And then we're going to fold at that two and a half inch score line. And we're going to put our tear and tape is going to go in between the two score lines. going to go there and then it's going to go on the back side of that shorter end. Back side of the shorter end and in between the two score lines on the top. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove it and then be very careful. I kind of keep my finger underneath here so I don't accidentally attach it to the foil before I want it attached to the foil. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and line this up so that I have about an eighth of an inch border because we cut it a quarter of an inch smaller so the whole border round is gonna be an eighth of an inch. And then I kind of want to make sure that I'm centered between the two sides. I might move this just a little bit this way, just the way it looks on my TV screen here. So I'm gonna move that up a little bit. And then when I have that where I want it, I'm just gonna press this down in place down here. Okay, then I'm gonna take this piece that I want to have layered on top of it. This edge is gonna line up with the top edge and I want it to be centered all the way around. So it might be easier for you to kind of Go like this and make sure it's centered and then press it down. Okay, so there's our little mechanism that we have going. So it's gonna open up like this where you can put your gift card inside. I can also attach this Holly Jolly now to the inside because I know where that little mechanism is down there. Okay, and now we can put the rest of this together. So, and I've got lots of dimensional backs here. We're gonna go ahead and attach the fa la 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 paper. <laughs> so it doesn't look, the paper doesn't look as busy once you have all this other stuff on it because it takes away, I mean, you're, it's covering up, it's being covered up by some stuff. So. Even though fa la 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 la, that's a lot of it, um, we're covering a lot of it up as well. All right, and then this is going to go down on the Poppy Parade base. Usually a real red girl for Christmas, but this pop, this really does say Poppy Parade and it does match perfectly with the um, designer paper. And then this has to go on with dimensionals on the back. So we're gonna go ahead and give ourselves enough dimensionals to hold it in place, but not put our dimensionals too close to that little mechanism so that it can um, probably don't need that many. I like to make sure that nothing's gonna fall apart. <laughs> Everyone's going to stay where it's supposed to stay. All right, and then again, I'm going to center it, and it should line up so that this little edge right here runs along the bottom, roughly. And if you do that and center it right to left, it should be about center on your card, which it is. And so now when we open it up, our gift card will just be placed right there. And I think I'm gonna use those same gems, if I can find where I put them after I use them on the last card. Mm, here they are. And we'll just put a couple of these red little dots around just to add a little glimmer. Whoops, helps if you hold on to the dot. And we'll put one maybe there. Okay, so we've got a few dots on there just to add a little bit of something. And then we'll add a little bit of paper, the designer paper, to our flap. And just like that, we have a really fun gift card holder. Oh, thanks, Jan. Yeah, I was like, I don't really like this hole here. So I've got to figure out a way to cover up this hole. I don't really, really put any string in and have it hanging anywhere. And then I thought, well, I could put maybe another piece of paper in the back and it would kind of disguise the hole. Then I was like, mm, maybe Holly. We'll try some of that Holly and we'll, we'll disguise our hole that way. So, all right. So there is one of our gift card holders. Um, here is the other one that we made with the gingerbread man. OK, 
Okay, here's the one that I received in the swap that was my inspiration that was done by Sandy Carlson from Minnesota. And then we had our, it got buried with all my other ones. Let's see, we did the balmy blue one today. There is our sneak peek of that fun meandering meadows paper that's going to be available this week. So I will be posting um, right after this because I have the PDF done. I worked on that during the Packer game today. Um, I have the PDF done, so I'm going to go ahead and post that that has pictures of these. It kind of looks like this. It'll say creative challenge number one and it has all of the dimensions and then it has pictures and I even took pictures on the inside so you could see how that looks. And then I have the second one here has the dimensions and again the picture on the inside. And then I will also post um, on my Facebook page. So you have to go to Facebook to do this. So look for Create with Sarah on Facebook if you haven't found me from Facebook, if you've only found me on YouTube, you'll have to go to Facebook. And then um, if you make a card using this, you will post a picture there. It'll say creative challenge. You post a picture and anyone who posts a picture, um, not next Saturday, but the Saturday after, will be entered into a drawing to win the bundle of your choice. So you can pick any bundle from the holiday catalog, the annual catalog, um, or if you even wanted to do that, um, the one that I showed you, either the fluffiest friends that are coming out or um, the one that we did with the um, garden meadow, um, you can pick those as you if you want as well. So, okay, good. Someone said that they're gonna try this week. So you can back this video up, you can watch it, you can pause it um, so that you can see how did she do that again, I think because I did it twice and I tried to do it so that I was cutting all of the things that, like the die cutting thing. And if you do not have these stylus shapes, you could do anything you wanted to there. If you have a different punch that is a longer punch, um, if you have another die that has a hole in it, you just have to have something that's at least two inches long so that this um, goes underneath it. All right, that is it for that. Okay, I gotta turn my light back on and then I will come back to Whew. it is dark out already. So my stamp room is a lot darker than it normally is. So here I am. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, I will try to have a video next week that has some of the other um, new online exclusives that you can get. Um, starting on Tuesday at midnight or Monday night at midnight, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then, um, but I will not be live and then I will be live the following week. And that's when I'll do the drawing for anyone who entered into this creative challenge. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your patience in waiting until today. Um, I was like, when am I going to get this face, this YouTube live in? Because I really, um, like I said, I'm the scorekeeper of the game. So I wanted to be there for them. Um, I had my card buffet in the morning. This morning I had to teach religion from eight until noon. And I'm like, I just don't know when I'm going to be able to fit it in. So thanks for tuning in. If you're from Wisconsin, it's a much happier day this week because the Packers finally won. So anyway, enjoy that. And I will be back here in about two weeks, but I'll be Saturday at 8.30 in the morning. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful week. I hope that I've inspired you to be creative, and I hope that you will join me in this creative challenge. Have a good week. Bye-bye.